So looking at one more example here, this time we're going from uh, negative 3 to 3 in the integral, and we note that x squared is uh, 9, whether it's the bound 3 or negative 3, and 9 minus 9 is 0. So 1 over 0 is going to be an undefined function. So now we go ahead and do our exact same procedure, but we notice that there is some type of symmetry here. And because of that symmetry, we can take the bound from 0 to 3 and multiply that by 2, and making our lives a little easier. So let's take uh, this k and set it to 3. And we are thus taking the limit as k approaches 3 from, that, from 0 to k, 1 over square root of 9 minus x squared dx. So we can see that this is a, another uh, trig integral. And if we remember from our table, uh, this equals limit as k approaches 3 times sine inverse of x over the square root of this term, which is 3 taken from 0 to k. So we have limit as k approaches 3, sine inverse of k over 3 minus sine inverse of 0. So the inverse sine of 0 is going to be 0. So we're left with the limit as k approaches 3, sine inverse of 3 over k over 3. And when we plug in the 3 for the k, we'll get limit, we'll get inverse sine of 3 over 3, which equals 1. And uh, this, it becomes pi over 2. So don't forget that we are using a symmetry rule. So the very end result should be 2 times uh, itself to get the answer. So 2 times pi over 2 which equals pi. So just to recap on improper integrals, uh, we're just following the same procedure every single time uh, by making one of the bounds a variable and taking the limit as that variable approaches the bound, 3 in our case, and taking the integral from one bound to another. And if you notice any symmetry, it is good to use it because uh, our whole goal is here to make everything more simple. Everything simpler, everything more efficient to solve. Uh, so improper integrals are no problem as long as we follow the same procedure every single time. So thanks for watching educator.com. We will see you in the next lesson.